Uh, did you know that NASA is planning to uh, go to the moon in 2024? I did, yes. N- no, sir. no, sir. I had heard rumors about that. No, it's the first time I, I heard about it. I didn't know that. I mean, yes. I, I, <laughs> I did not know that. On- um, I do think, you know, there are also a lot of problems on our own planet that that NASA also has a hand in dealing with, you know, they do a lot of earth science work. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that, but, um, you know, I think that sort of an issue that a lot of people struggle with that, like, this is really cool and important, but like, what about all the homeless people and all the people who are starving and what about climate change? And, you know, I think there's just a lot of, there's a lot of other priorities kind of floating around since, 60s, you know, like keeping this world intact that a lot of people kind of argue that, you know, we maybe shouldn't be putting so much money on. So like right now it's expensive and it depends on what we're doing. You know, we could be laying groundwork for stuff we don't know about yet. You know, I've heard people talk about mining certain types of hydrogen from the moon to use for fuel sources and things like that. I mean, if we're just using rock collection, I know we only have like a certain number of samples in like NASA labs that they're really important because they give to museums and things like that. And sometimes they're used for like certain innovations or whatever in technology I've heard. I don't really know a hundred percent, but yeah, like, it's worthwhile. Obviously it must have a lot of commercial uses and defense uses and, and uh, learning uses. Um, I think they say that the story of the earth is in moon because it probably was the most part same is a part of one body which is split and become a moon. I mean, they say that. Well, Lord, God knows. I don't know. So The Japanese have such a reputation for being able to do some things incredibly well. You know, I think there is very much this kind of, um, this ethos of, you know, where is some of the best food in the world? Japan. And I don't think that has so much to do with sort of the the agriculture in Japan as it does with you know, a lot of the times when Japanese people are going to put their minds to something, they do it incredibly, incredibly well. I don't know what exactly they are doing, honestly, because I'm not into that, you know, area. I don't have that knowledge. But um, in general, I would say maybe more of like probably some kind of advertising or maybe putting it in like some news or media somewhere, you know, some social media, media kind of stuff, you know, so people know, you know, what's going on and what they're planning. I'm sure I they- think we have um, enough uh, brain power right now um, and resources here on Earth to help Earth and a lot of its own citizens, right? Um, we just need to have the will to do it. Um, but but I, I see that as completely independent issue than having a... a resources to explore what's out there so uh, i don't so i tend to disagree a little bit about uh, let's do one before the other i think they're 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 two independent things it has to be below ten thousand, probably right like you could get a significant amount of people on there for below 10 people could save for many years and get there after that i feel like you're talking about a house, you know what I mean? Like you're getting into the like, not very many people can reach those spots. Well, sorry, it is a better thing today. It is uh, two days or technology days, so it is very exciting for me to go to moon. I mean, like it's always like depicted in like movies and stuff that we're all gonna have this like hoverboards and like really cool like different teleportation things or stuff like that. So I guess that's how I see it in my head, just because it was depicted in movies. And I guess that'd be kind of cool to have in the future um, if we can get to that level. Like the movie Xenon. Like they were able to get on the moon (laughs) and had McDonald's on the moon. Like that'd be kind of cool. That's just how I imagine it being at 500 years. Right. I am looking at the Earth from far distance, probably one of the most exciting part of this whole, um, whole journey. Uh, rather than looking at the moon, probably we like to live. We like to look at the uh, home first before we see something else. This is our nature. Hey, you know, you look at the map. The first thing you want to see is, "Hey, where is my home at?" Exactly. Then looking for the home. So that's for the first thing, right? 
So Google Earth, first thing we do, Google, how my uh, house look from the uh, from uh, satellite, from the far distance, or from the, from the top view. It's nature. It's natural. We love home more than anything else. Regardless. Like so much pollution and environment problem, and we have poverty. You know, you, so I would try try to help people who are in need. You know of this kind of support. Uh, probably I will fund it to those kind of organizations who can help people in their specific areas. You know where they need it. Uh, that would be my focus. You know, if I get that money. When one of Ellen's, Ellen's uh, rockets came back and finally made the landing after many failures, um, I remember sitting here with my cousin. We were watching it live as it was happening, and it was just like, "Wow, that is that's amazing, right?" And that's where it needs to go. And so I think that gives that gave a lot of people some hope that hey, maybe we can do this on the private sector. No, I mean, thank you so much, Nathan, for your time. This was really, really enjoyable. Um, if anyone else is watching and they're kind of, you know, considering coming on and speaking to you, like um, such an eye opener, so much to think about. This is a really wonderful project and all the very best of luck with it.